Example two, Wilbert was eligible for the American Opportunity Credit for 2018, 19, 20, and 22. Wilbert's parents claimed the American Opportunity Credit for Wilbert on their tax returns for 2018, 19, and 20. No one claimed an American Opportunity Credit for Wilbert for any other tax year, so only three years thus far. The American Opportunity Credit has been claimed for Wilbert for only three tax years before 2022, therefore, Wilbert meets the second requirement to be eligible for the American Opportunity Credit. If Wilbert were to file Form 8863 for, two, for 2022, the box on Part 3, Line 23, should be checked no. If Wilbert meets all the other requirements, he is eligible for the American Opportunity Credit. Let's do another one. Example number three. These are great. Glinda enrolls on a full-time basis in a degree program for the 2023 spring semester, which begins in January 2023. So we're talking tax year 2022, but it doesn't happen until 2023. Glinda pays the tuition for the 2023 spring semester in December 2022. And we're usually on a cash-based system, so you paid for it but you didn't actually get the education or you're not gonna until 2023, even though you paid for it in 2022 with the tax year being 2022. Because the tuition Glinda paid in 2022 relates to an academic period that begins in the first three months of 2023, the eligibility to claim an American Opportunity Credit in 2022 is determined as if the 2023 spring semester began in 2022. So under normal conditions, you would think that would be the case under normal conditions. In other words, you would think you would be on a cash-based type of system, possibly being able to take the credit for the payments made in the year they were made, not when the service was provided. However, uh, if you try to take advantage of that system, which would be usually a more unusual circumstance by trying to prepay more upfront, then, then that's why they put this three-month limitation thing in there. All right. Therefore, Glinda satisfies this third requirement. All right, tip. If the requirements above aren't met for any student, you can't claim the American Opportunity Credit for that student. You may be able to claim the Lifetime Learning Credit. So if you can't get the better one, American Opportunity Credit, you might be able to get the worser one, but it's better than nothing. The Lifetime Learning Credit for part or all of that student's qualified education expenses instead. Who can't claim the credit then? Who can't do it? You can't claim the American Opportunity Credit for 2022 if any of the following apply. So your filing status is married filing separately. They don't want that because they think you're going to take advantage of it possibly by trying to lower your AGI, adjusted gross income, below the threshold so you can take it or something like that. So that's common with if you're married then and you're looking for some credits for these credits, then usually it's better to file married filing joint than married filing separate. You are claimed as a dependent on another person's tax return, uh, such as your parents' return. So if you're claimed as a, as a dependent, you can't claim the credit yourself because the assumption is that your parent is supporting you. That's one of the conditions to be a dependent. So you would think that your parent possibly could claim the credit, but not the, 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 the student. So see who can claim a dependent's expense later. Uh, your, your modified adjusted gross income, your MAGI, your adjusted gross income, which might be modified by a factor which could be related to foreign income or something like that. But typically your, your adjusted gross income, that's the phase out, is $90,000 or more, $180,000 or more if filing jointly. MAGI, adjusted gross income modified, is explained later under effect of the amount of your income on the amount of your credit. Okay, you or your spouse were a non-resident alien for any part of 2022 and the non-resident alien didn't elect to be treated as a resident alien for tax purposes. More information on non-resident aliens can be found in publication 519 if you want to dive into that in more detail. You weren't issued an SSN, Social Security Number, or ITIN by the due date of your 2022 return, including extensions, you can't claim the American Opportunity Credit on either your original or amended 2022 return. Also, 
You can't claim this credit on your original or amended 2022 return for a student who wasn't issued an SSN social security number, an A10 adoption uh, number, or an ITIN uh, by the due date of your return, including extensions. If an A10 or ITIN is applied for on or before the due date of a 2022 return, including extensions, and the IRS issues an A10 or I10 as a result of the application, the IRS will consider the A10 or I10 as issued on or before the due date of the return. All right, here's our flow chart, question and answer. Can you take the credit? American opportunity only, not talking lifetime learning here. So you can claim the American opportunity credit for 2022. So did you pay qualified education expenses in 2022? for an eligible student. Normally you will get the form from the financial institution indicating at least tuition uh, was paid. If yes, we continue on. If no, we go down here. You can't claim the American Opportunity Credit. Next item. Did the academic period for which you paid qualified education expenses begin in 2022 or the first three months of 2023? So you paid for it in 2022. We're on a cash-based system. So that's usually when you're possibly able to get it. Or even if you didn't start until three months, you know, the classes didn't start until like three months of 2023, within three months. If yes, we continue. If no, no. Uh, the, is the eligible student you, your spouse, if married, filing jointly, or your dependent, you claim on your tax return. So are they you, your joint spouse, or a dependent, someone with a social security number on your return? If yes, we continue. If no, no. Uh, are you listed as a dependent on another person's tax return? So in this case, we would think no, because if we were a dependent on someone else's tax returns, then we would think that someone else possibly could get the deduction, not us, because, because in essence, they're supporting us financially, uh, you would think. So in this case, no continue. If yes, you can't take the deduction, but possibly the other person who's claiming you can. Uh, next, is your filing status married filing separately? So you can't have that. The IRS is skeptical of married filing separately. So if you're married, you got to file married filing joint is the general idea. So, so if no, it's not filing separately, we continue. For any part of 2022, were you or your spouse a non-resident alien who didn't elect to be treated as a resident alien for tax purposes? So we got to say no on that one. And to continue, if so, then is your modified adjusted gross income, your MAGI, this is the income phase out, $90,000, $180,000 if married filing jointly. If it gross income less than that. It's got to be less than that. If it's over that, then then you're going to lose the, the credit capacity because you make too much money. But if it's less than that, we continue. Did you use the same expenses to claim a deduction uh, or credit? So you can't like double dip on uh, the credits. So if you if you used the, the, the same expenses to get a, a deduction somewhere, or you use them for another kind of credit, you can't like take the same expenses and apply it to another uh, credit that would be double dipping on the expenses. And so we're gonna say no, were the same expenses paid entirely with a tax-free scholarship grant or employer provided education assistance? So that would uh, kind of be similar to the double dipping if it were, because if you got tax-free money for free, to pay for the expenses, it's not really an expense because you got free money to pay for the expense with the scholarship or grant or if the employer provided the benefit and you didn't include it in income because that was the point of them providing the money so it's not included in box one of the W-2 form, then you would think you can't get an expense because you're not paying in taxes on the income. Uh, you already got a benefit for it in that case. And then, so we'll say no. Did you or someone else receive a refund of all the expenses? Did you or someone else receive a refund of all the expenses? So in other words, you, I guess you paid for the expenses there and then they and then they refunded the expenses, in which case you didn't really pay for the expenses because they were refunded. So we're going to say no. Then uh, you claim the American Opportunity Credit for 2022. There's some qualifications down here, but that's the general questionnaire you can have in your mind. You can picture that nice questionnaire in your mind 
when asking these questions. And then you want to overlap that with the lifetime learning credit questionnaire 